What's up everybody? This is Fitzbaz Recovery. I'm Paul the producer and I'm here to help you get fit, stay healthy and stay sober. So um some of you who are listening might have noticed I didn't have a show last week, but I did do a show. It's just that at, right after I finished doing it, I was deleting all these old videos off of my phone and bam, I accidentally deleted the show I did, which is I didn't get super upset about it. Because there were some moments I wasn't too happy about. In fact, I think I just didn't feel super articulate or like I was expressing myself the way I wanted to. Plus, I had a little bit of a temperament problem because right when I hit record, my neighbors started mowing their lawn. And I it was just, I couldn't focus because the lawnmower was there going like in the background. So it annoyed me. And so I didn't wind up posting a show last week and... I should have still posted something so you guys knew that I didn't forget about you or I'm not falling off the wagon. It had nothing to do with that. I recorded a show, but the sad thing is that that show was lost into the ether of delete on my phone. <clears throat> it should go to a delete folder in my opinion. I'm not going to get into the whole Apple iCloud thing harassing me, whatever. Um... So what's been going on? I've been having a unique change of uh, modus operandi. My mode of life has changed a little bit around fitness, around trying to get my back better. I might have been talking to you guys about that already. I've been trying to be very patient while my back recuperates from some unknown issue, whatever it is. have a few ideas about why my back has been out of sorts, but my... Um, my attitude has been a little bit off and I've been trying to compensate for it by being productive in other ways that are positive for me. Uh, One of those ways was recording music. I managed to somehow be sober and write and record a pretty good little song. At some point I may share it. We'll see. I have to decide how I'm going to go about putting new material out there or doing whatever it is because right now I'm just like well I'm not really pursuing music like a business it's just sort of like my artistic outlet that I happen to take very seriously I'm not comfortable calling it a hobby either because a hobby I don't know some people aren't necessarily good at their hobby for me on a personal emotional level it's much more than just a hobby music is for me so um Another thing that's bothering me, I have this plumbing problem that's caught, it's like an old 50 year old pipe that's corroded and rotted out, is like just splashing and leaking into my crawl space when I'm washing dishes. So this this is a complicated fix. I have to call a plumber, it's probably gonna cost between like 600 bucks and a thousand bucks to fix. I'm not happy about that, but never mind. That's <clears throat> the reason I'm bringing that up, and the, what it has to do with my health is. So I've been using my kitchen sink a lot less because I don't want it to leak into the crawl space. It's causing a little bit of moisture and mold, and so consequently, I have been going out for food a lot more, and I've been eating a lot more food like burritos loaded with cheese processed foods and whatnot i don't do the fast food thing a lot although this is fast food it's kind of like very delicious authentic mexican food i'm getting from these places and i think gosh i think that may be having an effect on my back i've noticed that i'm a little bit inflamed my my body has some kind of inflammation going on and and this ring finger is one of my indicators for that okay so going out eating crappy food i think has maybe inflamed my body a little bit a little more than usual and one of the ways i notice it is this ring finger like it's usually in the past has been very easy to get on and off it's not quite as bad today but yesterday putting this ring on was uh see it's still a little bit tighter than it used to be but Yesterday, it was next to impossible to get that ring on my finger. So I think that's an indicator that my body is inflamed or retaining water. And I don't know what it is. So I decided to um, start cleaning up my eating again and just live with the way my sink is. I have a big pot 
to catch water in my sink and when it fills up I go empty it in the backyard but it is not easy to clean a lot of my dishes in it because it's like this confined little area I'm just trying to keep it drier underneath here where it leaks but anyway all that processed food I think has sort of irritated my body and so I've been uh, I went to the grocery store I loaded up on a bunch of greens and vegetables and uh, I'm just doing that again. I've changed my salad diet a little bit. I'm cutting more sugar out of my diet. I'm cutting down on carbs. The chiropractor I go to said that spaghetti is like one of the most inflammatory things you can eat. And I'm like, oh, so it's one of the most inflammatory things you can eat. But it happens to be one of the greatest foods in the world. So I'm not happy hearing that. And I think it's because it's the carb processed food type deal. He also thinks I might be um, sensitive to gluten. So I wondered if I might get a test and just, just to see if I'm sensitive to gluten. I know I had a cousin tell me that he is. And so, although you can be sensitive to things but not have an outward symptom or sign that you are. And so, and here's the bottom line, people. It's frustrated me not being able to work out like I want to because mentally I want to get up and do it but I'm also like Ugh, if I get up and I work my legs the way I've been working my legs it may put me beyond into this back issue where I'm like immobilized or much more miserable than I am it's not that bad but certain things certain positions and movements I'm like oh no this is not good um like, uh, so I went to the chiropractor and he, he cracked this part of my neck. He goes like, crack, crack. And it was like, it sounded like a bag of potato chips being smashed. It was so, it's like, oh, and, uh, I'm like, wow, that really is <clears throat> quite the change. I have all this phlegm. I don't know what's up with that. I just ate. Usually I've been trying to do this, not right after I just ate. So my neck cracked and the first time he cracked my neck i noticed immediately that when i go like that with my head i'm not getting this super tight thing referring down in my lower back and so that is a change and i've i've changed up my lawn routine also i told you guys i was working out in my lawn a lot which involves being down on my hands and knees and leaning over pulling stuff up out of the ground a lot and and i think I was doing that so much that that could be where the problem started originating and it's just um, not a good feeling and so one of the worst things was the night before last I I woke up and I'm feeling how my back is spasming a little bit in the night and I'm like that is not cool at all like um, it's the most unpleasant thing to have a back spasm and here it feels a little like knives so yesterday I woke up with this resolve that, hey, I'm going to start eating cleaner again because I think that contributes to the inflammation of the body. And, and and I don't know what it is. It's been years I have had not had a problem with my back spasming at night, but uh, that doesn't make me happy. So I'm, I took immediate proactive control of that and hopefully it'll get better. And so let's relate that to addiction a little bit, okay? Like so... As a pot smoker, a former pot smoker, I I was thinking in my mind, you know, it plays tricks on you. It starts to make you think, hey, you're feeling a little out of sorts. Maybe marijuana would help. And so I was driving by a dispensary yesterday, and my this is the way my mind works, okay? There was never like a chance I was going to be like, okay, I'm going over there and getting something. But my mind is kind of like, I have cash on me. And that's one of the reasons I don't like to have lots of cash on me because it totally enables me to go and buy it. Cash burns a hole in my pocket no matter what. But like, um, if I have cash, I can definitely go buy marijuana. So my dad's like, why don't you have cash? And uh, and I didn't tell him why. But the, the big reason is it burns a hole in my pocket and it also... It enables me to go get marijuana like in a moment's notice because we can't charge it. I don't know if any of you know that dispensaries out here. It's not possible to charge it on a credit card. And, and maybe that's a good thing for me personally. It's not possible to use a debit card either or write a check. You're stuck exclusively having to pay cash for it. So my mind as I'm driving by will work like that. I'll be like, 
thinking about my back problem and I'm like, hey, some marijuana might make you feel better. And I've been bored. I've been bored and I've been lonely. But I have no one to blame except for myself, okay? This weekend, there were three distinct social situations I could have gone and been a part of, except I was just like, no, I didn't do it, and I wound up being more of like a loner. And I do think that has an effect on me. It it kind of bums me out, and and it honestly, that bummed out feeling, when I get that bummed out feeling, that's also when my mind goes to the idea of smoking marijuana because it's like bam all of a sudden you're not dwelling on that and you're in this you state of mind euphoria ooh nice and um so let me i just brought up the word euphoria and there was a sort of talk i had last week about relating my meditation which is uh which revolves around cultivating relaxation in my being being a calm person, responding to challenges in a calm way, not emotionally overreacting. So at the end of my meditation, I get in this very distinct calm state of mind and I notice it. Like I'll sometimes start out the meditation and and my mind will be scatterbrained and it'll be like all over here and I just, I don't get irritated. I'm like, okay, just take it easy wash that away that's the term i use in my head i'm like just wash that away let it go and just focus on being clear and calm and so eventually i reach a point in the meditation where all of a sudden bam my focus on what i'm doing clicks in today in the beginning of it i was all out of order with everything and i don't get it i got a very good night's sleep but i was out of order with the things i usually say to get myself in that state of mind and then all of a sudden it clicked and i was in it i was there And so by the end, when I'm just deliberately washing my head out, being clear, not saying anything to myself, I'm quieting all the internal dialogue and focusing on just relaxing and having a clear state of mind. And I even say without my ego and without a thought of time, without a perception of time, emptying out, I'm telling you. And so there are these moments in there where I'm distinctly calm. And it's recognizable. I'm like, I'm calm. Like that, whatever that is during the regular day that can be frustrating, whatever, I realize it's lifted off of, off of me at that moment. And I'm just like in this serene state. Okay, but not euphoria. Euphoria is something distinctly different. So like, if I were to smoke weed right now, I'd get in this totally unnatural state of euphoria. And someone would, I'm not going to get into the argument with somebody who would be like, no way, man, weed is totally natural. It's natural. Ugh. But it's like a state of euphoria like you get in with marijuana because you're applying an outside source for it that just totally changes the brain chemistry. It's not really a natural state of euphoria. Not not like, I can't remember if I talked about this last week, not like when my daughter was born and I wasn't high and I had this natural state of euphoria from what was going on or other just natural highs, natural joys that result in a state of euphoria, which is a distinct kind of euphoria from a drug that you're applying to your brain. So the calm that I get from meditation can't be compared to from the the bliss and the euphoria you get from certain types of experiences on drugs, especially marijuana for me. I relate to that one. And even alcohol to an extent. The first few minutes where you're like, oh, here we are, yeah, ooh. And all of a sudden your inhibitions go like, wah, and, and your problems take a back seat. So I'm, I have sort of found a sober tool through meditation to deal with, uh, to, to discover that sort of putting my problems on the back burner type feeling. And it's a nice feeling. I would say if you can figure out how to do that for yourself, it's totally worth it, okay? So there are many days when I start out meditation and I'm just like, ah, uh-huh, going to go through this. And I, I start out with a good attitude. I immediately tell myself something like, okay, I'm going to really try to get something out of this. And it it's immediate from the get-go. I commit to it. It's like a surrendering. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. I want it to be good. I want to 
mellow out, calm my mind. And there are all the little things I go through, which a lot of which I've talked about here, to the ways I want to cultivate my mind, my spirit, my personality, my attitude, heal my body physically, including like the things that are ailing me uh, the last couple weeks that I've told you about. Every time I go into meditation, I focus on my body healing in those distinct areas, relaxing them, healing them with chi, with that white light force you use. Yes, I do imagine such a thing. And, and whether it works or not, I'm trying to train my mind to have a belief system like that is possible. I'm curing my mind. But, but the euphoria you experience when high is elusive and it's something you're always having to chase. And then you're like, and then the more of the drug you do, the harder it is to catch that same initial feeling. And so I think that's where the statement or term the phrase comes from chasing the dragon when it comes to getting that high off of drugs. But the interesting thing about um, meditating is that it's accessible whenever you want it. And, uh, you know, another benefit of meditation that I like to think about is that it, in, in the high state of mind, I would have smoking marijuana within 10 or 15 minutes, my mind, I would feel as I observe it was a neurotic mess, just like angry and no, 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 no. And I could go from being in a cheerful, jovial state to immediately being like excessively angry. So it would pop back and forth. And, uh, I, and so I didn't not, I did not like those mood swings. So I've had this focus. I've talked about it on here a little bit since sobering up. I try to develop my mind into good habits and to to habitually be in a good state of calm even keel and that's the benefit of meditation so i spend 20 i've been doing 22 minutes that's my new habit 22 minutes of meditation and right up toward the very end it's weird how my mind works i'm like i just know the alarm on my phone is about to go off and i'm like even in such a calm state of mind i'm like i wish i could hit the snooze with my brain before it starts going deet, 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 deet. but anyway um getting in a habitual habit with the mind of indulging in positive things okay so that your mind just gets used to being in that lighter state on a regular basis i i have also mentioned before i know uh reading the right kind of book has that effect so like i'm focusing on this author who has a really positive way of expressing him or herself and and so when I'm focused on that and I'm not in my own head dwelling on my own problems or I'm relating it to myself in a positive way I also think that reading is a great way to have a positive state of mind and entertain myself in a cerebral way so even if it's reading for entertainment I think there's more of a benefit to that intellectually in the mind than there is watching something on TV. Just the way you zone out watching TV, I don't know that that's good. It just is, it's a different kind of hypnosis you're sort of in. And I'll bet you, you know, so it's the type of thing you pursue, talking about hypnosis now, jumping into that. You could, uh, you could be doing something for yourself that's not beneficial. Or, you know, uh, it all depends. So if it's positive, I watch these heavy metal documentaries about the history of heavy metal and about heavy metal bands, all kinds of different bands. And I love the stories of these guys. So I find myself in a very calm state of mind. I also find myself as a musician myself inspired by these things. So it's all about finding what clicks with you, what gives you that really good... Um, that really good wavelength that that everybody it must be accessible for somebody for some i bet you some women crochet and they're like Ur, or men who whoever crochet is if you find peace in doing crochet or knitting or whatever the heck it is that you find to be pleasant uh do it i i would also relate that to playing guitar okay i get into a a groove playing a riff for example and let's say I'm really into the riff and I play it again and again and again to the point where I don't even have to think to go through this this muscle motion with my hands and 
and then I can be really expressive with it and change it. I'm in a state of mind that I would call sort of hypnotic or meditative. And so you have to find those things for yourself, whatever it is. I'll bet you for some people it's playing sports. For some people it could be playing the right kind of video game, but I don't know if I want to go there because I think video games can be addictive. I think Facebook can be addictive. Um, going back to the thing I said about not not doing the social things I need to do this past, that I should have done this past weekend, that social element being such a vital component of life, I think, I could focus on bettering myself all I want. And really, what is life if you're stuck in a, in a cocoon, kind of being loner, a self-imposed surrounding where you're just like Mr. Solitary all the time or Mrs. Solitary, depending on who you are. You got to have those social connections in life. Intellectually, I know this, but I, I have a tendency to try and keep people at bay. And I don't think that our, our world that we live in with the internet, with smartphones, with Facebook and social media, that these things are conducive all the time to that reality. You can call it social media. You can say that it's that your wish is for someone to connect. I'm thinking of Mark Zuckerberg, like how his goal is to have people connect. I see people, and I do it myself, using social media and Facebook in particular as a means to keep someone at an arm's length distance. To be like, okay, this is kind of our little safe zone where we interact here. And yeah, I'm your friend, but I keep you here. And so, I mean, like, so I will question whether, whether and to what extent that's real friendship but like I think that social media and Facebook um, along the lines of substance abuse, I can draw parallels between the way people interact with it, the way they use it to supplement a social life without really having one. I do that. That's not healthy. So I got to get out there and do real things with people more. And so, yeah, Facebook's really awkward that way. Last week, it was one of the things I talked about on the accidentally deleted podcast that I didn't post for you guys. But so, and I've seen social media devolve into a very negative experience for a lot of people. And at times, I've had my moments where I go back and forth. To be honest with you, I've improved a great deal with not going out there and getting into arguments with people or insulting people. And I remember when I was doing my podcast six years ago, that was a whole thing online. I was just like, Phew. I was just like still very new to me, I think. And I hadn't quite developed wisdom or whatever. And I was, I was uh, interacting in a very negative way with a lot of people alienated. God knows a lot of people. And I find it very strange people who are your friend on there, but you wouldn't, um, they wouldn't be caught dead liking your post or interacting with you or contacting you. It's like, so why are we friends on here? And my dad says that too, like um, a friend, add a friend on there because I'm sorry, but pick and choose your friends very carefully in life and know, have a very smart, um, informed opinion a view of what a real friend is because it's not just somebody who's your friend on Facebook, okay? That can't fill the void of a real personal flesh and blood relationship going outside and going on a walk with somebody or going to a meeting where you meet up with people or a social event or a movie or whatever where you're actually doing it with somebody. It is not the same thing. So, I mean, I, I encourage people to you know, don't just surrender to this life of Facebook being your social experience in life because you and I are shortchanging ourselves enormously. I feel strongly about that. And, you know, I don't think that debate is really being properly talked about anywhere. I think it should be on the news. People should be discussing it in talk radio. People should be discussing it on Facebook, but God forbid... Ought I get into the weird way Facebook, I believe, censors people? I ought not. <laughs> oh, people, my darling people, have I really been talking 24 minutes, 55 seconds? Because that's 24 minutes past your goldfish attention span. You'd be like, I was just listening. 
What? I didn't hear you. Because we're past 20 seconds and I'm on to the other thing now. That's another thing. I think Facebook, social media, all kinds of things we do online, and our cell phones, and the multitasking, it has trained our minds not to be able to focus on one thing in the same way. So we have like the attention span of a goldfish now as a society. What's up with that? We don't even have to memorize phone numbers anymore. So so sometimes engage in those classic arts, okay? That's what I'm telling you. Turn off the phone, get off the Facebook. I got on and onto my computer and recorded a song this past week, which was awesome. And um, I'm very happy and proud that I did that. It's a good little piece. Sober, completely sober. I was, I was just very happy that I can find that creativity and I'm getting the same sort of creative stimulation out of it that I used to in the past when I was high all the time doing it. Used to be like smoke, record, smoke, play, record, smoke, smoke a cigarette, smoke a bong, record, smoke a bong, have a drink, have a beer, record, and this would go on for days working on one piece. Rehearse, 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 smoke, 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 record, 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 rehearse, 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 experiment, experiment, experiment. It's done! Why didn't you go out all these last three days, Paul? Uh, because, John Luca, I'm inspired. But you're in Italy on holiday. You need to go out. You need to do this. And you might be right, but I also got to run with that inspiration when I find it. Trust me. There's a lot of truth in everything I just said. We just all need to find the balance in our own lives. But I'm going to let you go. I'm going to wrap this up. Can't believe... Can't believe I went that long already. But this is Fitzpaz Recovery. Yes, even though I skipped... I'm still doing these. For the summer, I might be doing them on Tuesdays and putting them out on Tuesdays because my daughter's coming to me on Wednesdays during the summer. And so I won't have the same kind of free time to put them out uh, on that day. And so I'll be doing them on Tuesday. And it's important for me to keep up with this habit. This is one of my small little things I'm doing that I hope... There's a compound effect over time. Uh, you never know in whatever which way. I want to build a team of people who want to do fitness and maybe even find financial freedom doing it. And is it all about making money to me? Hell no. It's about building an enriched, meaningful life, helping other people. And honest to God, that's the truth. And I never would deliberately... <laughs> I would never deliberately go out and try and steal people from other people. It would be an inadvertent mishap. One I'm happy to discuss and, and not do. Uh, but, um, <laughs> Jesus. The vague stuff. You wonder about the vague stuff. You scratch your chin like that and go, What the devil is he talking about? Ooh. You'll just have to wonder. Okay. Anyway, this is Paul. You want to find out more about Fitzbaz, you can go to fitzbaz.com. There is uh, access to all of my social media on there. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, all that jazz, okay? I even have a Facebook like, like page, which I haven't been posting on as much, but hey, it's something. It's something. I want to thank Kevin McLeod for the amazing musical backdrop. I have the enormous privilege of playing on this show. You can find out more about this amazing composer by going to Incompetech.com. And that's all for today, people. I will let you go with some of this.